Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Doing all right. Uh, can you give me a memory of the, the big rivalry game, something that, that sticks out in your mind from you being with ASU going down south or playing against that team? Well, I've only been here one year, so, um, you know, last year um, was my, you know, my first one. Uh, so we were, we won, which was a lot of fun. Um, I really kind of got introduced to the rivalry when um, I got the job at Louisiana Tech with Sonny Dykes, who was the offensive coordinator there uh, at an at um, earlier time um, with Coach Stoops. And, um, you know, and I got their, their side of it and his wife's side of it and their family and all that stuff. So, um, but talked about the how angry the fans get on each side during the game and how heated the rivalry was. And, and uh, kind of I saw that. My family saw that. Uh, I think my wife kind of got into a little squirmish up in the stands with a, a fan or two, uh, which was kind of funny to hear about. Um, but, uh, you know, man, it's, uh, it was exciting last year. It was uh, an, an awful lot of fun. It, se it was like a bowl game atmosphere to me. You know, looking around and seeing everybody there and, and everybody hanging on every single play. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that again. Rob, uh, obviously when you look at the game film of Arizona from the last game, it's not really the most flattering one uh, when it comes to their defense. But uh, nonetheless, what have you seen from them when you look at game film from game one to game 11 uh, that you think can present some challenges? You know, they're a really, really good home team. And that's what you kinda, I've kind of noticed working in this conference for several years now is that um, this is a big home and away conference, it seems like. And it seems like uh, the home team has uh, a, a really good advantage for some reason. Um, and they, they are noticeably a different team on film when you watch their home games. And so what I instructed our kids and, and our staff was like, uh, I don't even want to watch any of their away game film. Because, I mean, that's not who you're playing. You're playing the team that absolutely stuffed Oregon um, and just shut them down, embarrassed them. And so uh, when you look at that game film, you're like, this is one of the best teams we've played all year on defense because they fly around, they play with an attitude. They're going to push the limits uh, on you. And, 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 and so um, it's going to be a, uh, a huge challenge. Hey. Hey, Coach. Trust Tedrick, Gen 12. Yep. Um, looking at how the game ended and just the Arizona State fans have been in this position before where it's right there and it's right in your grasp and you let it go. How do you change that story? How do you change that script moving forward, especially when it's, it's, it's so attainable and it's gone? Yeah, that's... Um Man, a question you, you ask yourself all the time as a coach, how do you, how do you change that? Um, one way you change it is sooner or later you got to do it, which, you know, we did against Michigan State, so you, you would hope that, um, you know, that would have some carryover. And, and then, you know, how we hung on at, at, at USC and, and, you know, the last two games before that were down to the wire and we seemed to, like, be able to do it. And, so I don't know. That's a that's a great great question as a coach. How do you change that? How do you win those close games? You know, and um, there I you know I don't I don't know. I've been doing this for 29 years. I don't I don't have an answer for you. You just you just got to eventually do it and then build upon it is what you got to do. The two point play. Um, <clears throat> you've been waiting for that situation to arise kind of all year long, and then to have it. <coughs> go the way it did and not even yep. get a replay, uh, a, re a review, I mean. Um, just kind of what are your thoughts on that now after thinking about it for a couple of days? Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, you know, I, I didn't even, like from the booth, from where I was at, you couldn't tell it was close. You know, it looked like he was clearly out of bounds from the booth. So I didn't even think about it. I was done. I was on to the next thing, you know, thinking about, okay, we get the ball back. Blah, blah, blah. So I wasn't even – I didn't really even know about it until I got on the bus and had my food in my hand, was on the bus to go to the airport, and somebody, or I think it might have been one of y'all showed me a picture on your phone. And I was like, whoa, wow, that is close. I didn't, I didn't realize it was that close because it didn't look like that from the booth. So, And then it was too late. And so, you know, 
quite honestly, um, I'm, I'm a person that believes you, you deserve opportunities and, and not taking anything away from the passion in the heart of our kids, the mistakes we made on offense, I just didn't feel deserving at the end of the game. Um, you know what I mean? If we would have played mistake-free football and all the way down to the end and didn't do really anything wrong, you know, it probably would have been worse for me. But now I looked around, I was like, yeah, well, hey, we dropped this many balls. We had this many false starts. We had this holding penalty. We had bad ball security. We did all of this. You know what? We probably don't deserve to win that game. That's the way I looked at it. Coach, you talk about getting I mean, teams preparing for you and U of A's defense, but I mean, teams have seen Eno week in and week mm -hmm. out, and he's still, I mean, obviously the offensive line, but still making plays. I mean, what do you attribute that to? Because, I mean, his, his season has been unbelievable, and the more tape there is, it would seem like defenses would have more keys, and they just don't seem to have an answer. Yeah, you know, I think uh, we've done a really good job. You know, I, I wish I could show you the spreadsheet of the, uh, the formations and run plays that we have run, and I'd, I'd hate to draw all that crap up. You know, if I'm on their other side, I'm one of their GAs, I ain't, I'm not liking this week because i got to draw all that stuff up. We've run – you know, we have our basic run plays, but we run them out of so many different formations and formations that we keep you off balance with motions. And then, you know, we try to get people in situations where, okay, if you're going to do this, then we're going to have some one-on-one -on -one opportunities out on the perimeter with our, with our receivers and, uh, you know, obviously Nikhil Harry. So, and I think we've done a good job of that, you know. Um, and, and, and then on top of that, you know, it just seems like he always makes the first guy miss. And so it, um, it's just that's really special because you can't block them all. You know, you can only – if they go cover zero, you, you're not going to block. You can't block everybody in the box. Somebody's going to be unblocked. And, uh, and he just does a, a great job of making that first guy miss and then making the play look like it was a better call than what it really was. Hey, Rob. So there's a lot of teams that do extra prep work for uh, rivalry games. Right. That, or they bring out – a bunch of trick plays and those types of things. What, what's your sort of philosophy on that? Do you do extra or you just try to do what you do well? I think it's kind of where you're at as a football team and how you've been going up to this point. Um, I think, like, if you're us, I think we have a pretty good thing going. And, um, and you try not to, to change too much. You know, if, you, if you're struggling, you're two and nine or something like that, yeah, you probably try to get some things rolling early with a trick play, a, a double move, or, or you do things like that um, to try to get, you know, your kids to maybe get an early score and, and get them in, in the belief mode. But I think both sides, they're playing for a bowl game. Uh, we're already in a bowl. Um, I think the belief part is on both sides, and I think it's going to come down to execution. And if it comes down to execution and who doesn't turn the ball over and who does better on special teams, um, then, then really then you should be preparing like you always prepare uh, and, and try not to get yourself out of sorts of what you've been doing. Rob, this has nothing to do with the game, but you've mentioned this a few times this year. Just, can you give us an idea of just how many Red Bulls you drink during the course of the game? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I always I start out with a 16 ouncer, and then um, and then I just kind of like where the game's headed from there, you know. And I just uh, kind of get keep rolling from there. Little kids, don't try this at home, obviously. Um, but and then you know I have these uh, organic energy chews that I eat a couple packs of those, and and then um, in the morning. Uh, whether it's, a, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a night game or a day game. Um, I drink probably two 60, two venti blonde, um, one blonde venti, uh, just coffee, and then a Americano. There you go. There you have it. Eh, not really. I'm kind of tired sometimes. I think I've drank so much that it's gone, it goes in reverse. But that's a great question. <laughs> Coach. Yes. Alec Hendon, House of Spark. Oh, sorry. Um, you guys have, in the, in the day games you've played, you guys have played very well, especially on offense. Do you think there's something to that? Do you think the offense is more comfortable playing during the day in more ideal conditions? You know, it's, it's weird because I, don't, I feel more energy in night games, like from our players, and I feel like a more of a bounce. I see the kids in pregame warm-up and their music and all that stuff, and, and the day games seem just like, you know, everybody's just kind of like feeling – feeling their way around, but it, just, it does. It does seem like that we have um, have played better in the day game. And, I, you know, I don't know what that, 
you know, I don't, I don't know. You might have to ask the players that, what their mindset is. But I feel the energy more in, in night games around here, um, especially in this stadium and all that stuff. So I don't know why that is. Rob, I know the offensive line, the way they've been playing, is it's such a high standard that maybe wasn't sustainable for the entire year. And, and, and against Oregon, there probably were some breakdowns, maybe maybe a step back, yeah. uh, both, both uh, um, pass, pass protection, uh, run blocking. Uh, what did you see from that game that maybe you haven't seen in previous games where they've played at a higher level? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, we had some – their nose guard was really – it was just a big guy. He was just huge, and he, and he had a great get off. And so if you don't double team him, you're going to get some penetration into the backfield and it's, it's going to cause some problems when you're trying to pull some guards and things like that. And we, had, we did early on, we had some problems with that. We had some, we had some guys, um, and somebody asked me this question after the game, did, did you feel like your guys tried too hard or I don't know how they phrased the question because this was such a big game? And at the time, I didn't. But going back and looking at the film, I feel like we tried to maybe outsmart ourselves a little bit in some areas at, at all the positions out on the field that we tried to do a little bit too much that was kind of outside the structure or the framework of the play. And I think that hurt us at times. Um, just, trying, just trying to do too much. Just, just, you know, just do the play. Just do the play, and, and we, would have been, we would have been better off. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you got to give them, give them credit. But we had... So many uncharacteristic things happened to us uh, throughout the course of the game. And it was just, uh, as the play caller, it was just kind of hard to get in a rhythm because you'd have a good play, then all of a sudden they review a play, and oh, no, he didn't catch it. Um, and then, or we'd get a nice something going, and we, then it's first and 20 on a holding penalty. And then it's third and 15 or third and 19. And so it was just so hard. And we haven't been doing that in the last three games. Our recipe had been, let's have some good first and 10 plays. Let's at least get it to second and six, second and four, work off of those. And then, you know, uh, we were having some breakdowns on first down. Then we had some long second downs, which really put us in, you know, some, some, some problematic situations. Um, but I did, I agree with you. You know, I, I don't, we were uncharacteristic up front this game. Coach, back to the concept of rivalries. Uh, you'll yes. forgive me. I don't know Louisiana Tech's main rival, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts more about. Yeah. You know, from your playing days Absolutely. or earlier in your career. Yeah. That's a, that's a great question. So I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, an Ohio State fan. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler. So, kind of uh, where you know you you punch players on the other team in the face. You know, uh, but <laughs> that was bad. Don't. That was a joke. Okay. Uh, sorry, but. You know, but that's what I grew up on is that rivalry, Ohio State-Michigan, you know, and so that was a lot of fun. And then I had the privilege of moving down to Mississippi. I played at Mississippi State and the uh, Ole Miss-Mississippi State, the Egg Bowl. That was, that was quite a, a rivalry. And then I lived in Alabama. My wife's sister was a cheerleader at Auburn, and uh, her husband played at, at uh, Auburn. And, um, you know, the Alabama-Auburn is, you know, that's kind of a rivalry too. So I, I spent six years there in Alabama watching that and how the people reacted to that one. And, man, they're, they're, that, they're nuts, like in the SEC now. I'm just telling you. Um, and then, uh, you know, I was at Cal and for the Cal-Stanford game, and that was a lot of fun. And then I know it's uh, well documented that I'm a New York Yankees fan, and, you know, when we play the other team, um, I don't even say their name. So as a fan – you know, as a coach, it's totally different. But as a fan, I respect rivalries and understand them to the highest degree because you don't want to be around me when the Yankees are playing the Red Sox now. I'm just telling you, you don't want to be in my house. You don't want to be anywhere around me. So I understand that the fans' point of view for this game and how the 365-day, you know, coming up after that game, how important that is, man. And I, I respect that. And, heck, I want to I want to win – the game for for those people and those those fans and the little kids that got to go to school and and all the trash talk and go to work and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, I want to bring that one home for all all the fans around here. Sorry, coach, kind of break the move back to Oregon. Yeah. Uh -huh. The offense really couldn't finish in the red zone, especially yeah. settling for field goal exactly. after field goal. You didn't see that veteran experience, especially just in Manny's position in certain key moments. Uh, 
What would you contribute the lapse or the lack of execution on your offense? Was it just the emotions? Was it the expectations, kind of like you're telling Hode, or just what was it? Yeah, there was the, the, the one, the, the throw to Brandon Ayuk was the one that hurt me the most. You know, I felt like, man, that was a good deal. We should win that battle. And, uh, you know, we just, it, we just didn't come up with the, with the play. But that was the one that hurt me. I thought was, you know, a good deal. We should have scored a touchdown on. But, um, yeah, it was just, uh, I don't know what it was. Um, you know, you know, we got down that we scored. The, you know, that was the, the tale of the game is we, had, we, we kicked too many field goals. You can't kick that many field goals in a, in a game when you're trying to, you know, get a chance to win the, the conference championship. You, you can't do that. you got to score in the red zone. We did not. Um, I didn't think we made the best decisions. You know, we, you can always second guess your calls. You know, when I go back, that's the first thing I do as a play, as a coach is look and go, okay, did I put him in? Uh, could I have called a better play? You know, I look at it and go, yeah, I, I probably could have called something better, maybe easier, I guess you would say. But but still, we had the numbers on some things, and we just didn't we didn't execute well down there. And I don't know why. I mean, we just didn't do it. Uh, piggybacking off a couple other questions and when you were talking about the flow of the offense, what about the third down conversion? Obviously, that was a huge problem, and you've been yeah. doing pretty good in that category for the past couple of weeks, but whatever right. it was, 3 out of 17 or 4 out of 17, uh, can yeah. you put your finger in anything there? Um, you know, w one of the problems um, was we had too many 7-plus third down. I can't remember how many we had. I think, was it 6? I can't remember, but we had we had more than we normally have third and longs, okay? Um, so that was one of the problems. But the thing that I noticed that stuck out like a sore thumb was I think we were o for we were overs on the third and four to six category, which we had in the past, you know, we made a an effort to let's get better there, and then we didn't. You know, I thought we had a touchdown on the one that got batted down that was going to go to Nikhil on a. On a rub route, I thought he was going to walk in the end zone on that one, but it got batted down. Um, so, you know, I don't have a, you know, like an exact answer for you on each individual one, but no, it wasn't definitely wasn't good enough. And that's why I said, you know, at the end of the day, I did not feel we executed enough on offense on our side of the ball and me to be deserving to maybe get that that call in the end zone. You know, just didn't. Thank you, guys.